Friday, March the 11th, 2011. It was a clear Friday afternoon. And as the Japanese went about their work, at 2.46 p.m., an earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale shook the country. Less than 30 minutes later, a second wave of disaster struck Japan. This time, waves as high as 16 meters crashing into Japanese coast. Sweeping away, everything that came its way. And two days later, the third shock, a nuclear meltdown. Triple tragedies. Leaving more than 15,000 dead. He was immediately taken to Over 4,700 missing and over 5,000 injured. Japan was facing its worst crisis since the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On the morning of August 6, 1945, the United States of America announced the end of the Second World War by dropping an atomic bomb right here. The bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki changed the world forever. It also changed Japan. 66 years later, Japan came face to face with yet another tragedy, this time in the form of the Great East Earthquake. On the four-month anniversary of an earthquake, tsunami and a subsequent nuclear meltdown, I bring you a special report from Japan, which is a land that is changing in the face of tragedy. The destruction was for everyone to see. The shock, evident. But the Japanese, true to their identity of being a silent and determined nation, dealt with the destruction with dignity. A dignity that helped them recover with speed. Unmatched, perhaps, by any other nation. Three months on, one look around Tokyo and there's hardly, hardly any trace of the destruction that hit the city. The Japanese have always been proud of the fact that they are prepared to deal with any calamity, any natural disaster, any earthquake. But this time around, more than just rebuilding roads and reconstructing damaged buildings, this time around, it's a fight against the system. In the capital, Tokyo, things are visibly back to normal. No signs of destruction from four months ago is visible. But the consequences of the greatest disaster to hit the nation in over six decades is not lost. Some openly voicing their opinion, but most expressing dissent only when asked about it. ちょっと、
あの1号機2号機の爆発ごろからもうすごい不安というかありましたよね。Four months on, there are no signs in the Sendai city itself. But as one moves away from the main part of the city, the destruction is still evident. Piles and piles of debris, hundreds of washed away cars stacked over one another, paddy fields submerged in water. But the biggest proof of the 10 meter waves that swept through Sendai is the city's airport. Following the tsunami, the entire Sendai airport was submerged in water. But within a month, the airport was functioning, though partially. The international flights, in fact, just started last week. But there's a massive reconstruction effort going on to restore the Sendai airport back to normal. As you can see around us, you can see escalators that were destroyed, the elevators that were destroyed. In fact, if we can、uh, pan to your left, you can even see the watermarks from the tsunami that are still left. For the Sendai airport manager, The personal trauma only made him more determined to pull the airport back on track. 最初は事務所にいたんですけども、地震が起きたということで一度外に出ました。エアラインの職員が津波警報が出たということで、外の皆さんに情報を伝えて、2階3階に避難しました。一度建物が水に浸かりましたので、その塩分除去がやっぱり一番大変なのかなという感じですね。But the story is not the same everywhere. The local government is dealing with damage that will take billions of dollars to be reversed. Thousands of people have lost their jobs, and worse, thousands have lost their homes. この現場は。えー6月の4日から、えー、あと1週間ほどです。宮城県としてはかなりだと思うんですけども、はい、我が社としては、えー、ここの他に前回まあもうちょっと離れたところに120個、はい、あ,あと他の宮城県の地域に100個ほどやってますので合計、はいえー、今で380ぐらいですかね。Over 20,000 Japanese families lost homes, lost their homes when the tsunami struck on March 11th in Miyagi Prefecture. The Japanese government is trying to rehabilitate them. This is one such effort that the Japanese government has undertaken. These are temporary houses、uh, where families will be living for about two years. Given the devastation and given the massive loss to the economy, nobody really knows what is going to happen to these families after those two years are over. The local government seems to be aware of the challenge they face. えっとまあ宮城県で以前から知事が福建宮城の実現ということをまあキャッチフレーズと出しとして出しまして、えっと産業をいかに強くするかということを進めていました。そのメインのターゲットとなっていますのが自動車産業。あるいはあの高度電子産業その二つが大きな分野となっています。その分野についてまずあの産業をもっとですね強くしていくという努力、企業誘致を行ったりとか、あと企業間の取引を進めたりと。But there are many who believe the government is not doing enough. In the tsunami devastated areas,、uh, refugees got these makeshift、uh, homes more rapidly. Uh, but now they're wondering how long they will be able to stay in these、uh, houses. They have just two years, and after that, what's going to happen? They're going to have to leave the places, and they lost their job. They have to rebuild their life. So there's big feeling of uncertainty. Throughout history, disasters, whether man-made or nuclear, has triggered the dramatic end of an era. And beginning of another in Japan. In the last six decades, Japan has. 
predominantly move towards three things technology progress and peace in the last six decades japan has successfully achieved its ambition it is one of the richest economies in the world it is arguably the last word in technology and it is also one of the four fashion capitals in the world the success that japan has achieved in the last six decades can only be attributed to itself the japan today is different from the japan six decades ago but the Great Eastern Earthquake has triggered a different kind of change. A change which in its nascent stage is marked by confusion and uncertainty. Can Japan continue moving the way it did prior to March 11, 2011? The choices they make now will lead them to either rebirth as a stronger nation or slow decline into ruin. At 8.15 a.m., on August the 6th, 1945, a bomb ironically called the little boy, carrying 60 kilograms of uranium, was dropped to the center of Hiroshima. An estimated 80,000 people were killed instantly. Another 80,000 injured. And an estimated 80,000 died in the next four months. Kejuri Matsushima. Then a 16-year-old student remembers the fateful day like it was yesterday. Well, uh, later we heard that uh, near tremendous heat in the center, it was over 4,000 degrees centigrade. 4,000 degrees. I am there 1,500 degrees in such a strong heat. Do you think, how can we live or so badly wounded, burned and wounded from head to feet? Whole body burned. Charcoal gray skin was pink. Faces, necks, breast, arms. Their clothes were torn and singed. Some were almost naked, leaving just some clothes around their waist. And without exception, they held out their arms forward like this, maybe because of pain, I think. And they were walking slowly in a long line. For 66 years, Kejiro Matsushima has been reliving his nightmare for the sake of peace. For 66 years, he has believed that Japan's use of nuclear energy has been for the But today, watching a second nuclear emergency unfold, this time triggered by a natural disaster, has left him, in his own words, confused. Of course, uh, uh all Japanese, not only citizens of Hiroshima, all Japanese oppose the, uh, the use of nuclear weapons, of course. But uh, this time, at the Fukushima case, after that, uh, I think most of Japanese people are in confusion. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, 
any energy uh, which we can get from nature, this kind of energy must be developed from now on. But uh, the use of nuclear energy for electricity or things like that, uh, is it uh, possible to oppose them? Uh, because we need electricity every day. See. There are a lot of Hiroshima citizens who oppose nuclear energy in any shape, completely. There are some op some citizens, but I myself, in confusion. Yeah. The bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki changed Japan 180 degrees. striving for technological superiority to achieve economic prosperity. And despite being the only country in the history of the world to suffer the devastating effects of a nuclear weapon, the Japanese made nuclear energy a national strategic priority. The result, the country's 53 nuclear reactors provided almost 30% of the electricity. There were plans to increase dependency on nuclear energy for providing electricity to 40% by 2015 and 50% by 2020. But that was before the Fukushima disaster. March 12th, the equipment to lower the pressure in the containment vessel has been prepared for. At number two reactor. A disaster that has woken up the Japanese to a rude reality. Reality that many are now openly protesting against. Japanese, the change too is subtle. You have to pay close attention to feel the undercurrents. It's not disruptive like it was in Libya or in Egypt. But since the nuclear meltdown at Fukushima, there have been organized protests across the country. Something that Japan has not seen before. It's not just the Japanese, but concerns raised world over have sent the Japanese government scurrying for cover. From blaming American planning overlooking design faults in the end plant to maintaining complete secrecy over the level of radioactivity. People of Japan realized that uh, you know peaceful nuclear energy could be harmful as well as uh, you know nuclear weapons. Uh, but uh, big industries still haven't realized. Uh, in the TEPCO case, you still have these uh, other big companies, banks. Uh, uh, supporting TEPCO financially. So I think corporate Japan still hasn't realized this uh, when uh, Japanese people now are aware that things are going wrong, that things have to change. The nuclear meltdown raises a second question about the future of Japan and its dependency on technology. Will probably never let go of their advancement in technology, something that led to their success. But what would be interesting as this country moves towards change is to see to what extent this technology will now be utilized. Before the events of March the 11th, one of the main worries, at least among the older generation, is the apparent indifference amongst the youth of the nation to work towards collective prosperity. It was a generation many felt that had it too easy. Yurusanomono 
皆が相携えいたわり合ってこの不幸な時期を乗り越えることを中心より願っています。Many believe that the Japanese Emperor's address after the triple tragedy in March would turn out to be the defining moment in their lives. There are a lot of people who are coming to the country, and I think that they are going to be able to do it. I think that they are going to be able to do it. I think that they are ことなんじゃないかなって思います。まあいい方向っていうわけじゃないんですけど、やっぱりちょっと日本が一つになったような感じはあります。全世界とえっと仲良くなれるようなと日本になれればいいと思います。Japanese spirit,、uh, people are disciplined,、uh, they respect each other,、uh, they have a sense of community, sense of group here that you don't have in much other countries. The great thing about Japan is that they accept facts and deal with them as realistically as possible. They accepted earthquakes to be a part of their lives and built quake-proof homes. They didn't hate the Americans for bombing them but instead chose to be friends with them. And while they hate the atomic bomb, they did choose to use nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. But today Japan finds itself standing at a crossroad once again. Faced with three tragedies and confusion over decisions made in the past. But looking at this country's history, one believes and hopes that Japan will once again change for the better. This is, after all, the land of the rising sun. In Japan, with video journalist Sahil, this is Padmini Vaidyanathan for Times Now.